basically, um, I've been all day writing content for the channel about uh, Viking, all of that sort of stuff, and I thought, let's just try and do something slightly different. And so I'm now going to be streaming for a while. And when I'm streaming for a while, I thought I would do some Crusader Kings. So my plan is to actually play as Northumbria for a little bit. And while playing as Northumbria for a little bit, the plan is to actually um, try and not die within the first few minutes. So right here we have uh, the famous Ella of Northumbria. If you're a fan of Vikings, and you probably already know what happens to him, but according to legends, he obviously gets uh, blood eagled and horrendously killed by the sons of Ida. And so when he gets killed by the sons, sorry, apologies, by the sons of Ragnar Lofbrook. And when he gets killed by the sons of Ragnar Lofbrook, uh, Northumbria basically loses a lot of its power. Now, I play Northumbria quite a bit. It's one of my little passions. So I will basically try and play Northumbria during this campaign. But basically, you start off at war with Jorvik. You start off at war with, up here, the um, the Western Isles and that area here, which is run by Ivar the Boneless. And so you've got a half uh, half down below here, you've got either the bonus up here, and you're in a horrendous position. So I'm expecting, unless I can somehow pull an alliance with Scotland or Mercia out the bag, to basically just be totally broken within moments. So hopefully you will enjoy this, and I will explain what I'm doing as I go along. But here we are, so let's have a look at Northumbria. So right below here you can see 10,000 angry Vikings just down here in Yorkshire, which is going to make my life a bit unpleasant. So straight away going to try and do a martial focus to actually survive for more than five minutes. So that's selected there. Next I'm going to uh, hold on to my domain for the time being. What else can I do? Yes, I don't think any of those are important just at the minute. Let's see, so I have 962 soldiers. I have six of my seven knights, and I have 200 um, of my own levies, men at arms. So let's see what the Kingdom of Scotland feels about me. Um, let's see. Arrange a marriage. Do I have any family members? Uh, I've got my granddaughter. Uh, that is not the well. He will accept that uh, to marry my granddaughter, but that does kind of feel a little bit unusual. So let's see if I can change anything else. Uh, should I make it slightly better? Yes. Uh, okay. So let's send that proposal. Please accept that this is the ninth. Uh, sorry, the eighth century. A uh, sorry, ninth century. So not exactly a progressive or enlightened period as such um so unfortunately pledging your seven-year-old granddaughter to be married by a man much older is unfortunately half of the package at this period now i've also got um let's see can i get her married to one of his kids um Same family. Okay. So is that your... Ah. So yes, you have no children of your own. So your brother is your heir. So I'm marrying to your nephew. So let's see if that gets an alliance with East Anglia. I myself, I believe, am unmarried, if I'm correct. No, I do have a wife. And I have children as well. So I have my son, who is also married, and his sister, who is currently... Oh, that's not good setup. So she is, I believe, married to the guy of scale. Oh gosh, not great for me then. So... Let's see how this forms. An alliance. Fantastic. So I am going to need to raise my own armies in Bambra. 
and now call my new ally to war and hope that he turns up. Uh, the actual likelihood of him turning up is highly slim, but we'll see. <sighs> um, invasion of Northumberland is probably more important for the moment, but let's see if he comes to help me. Uh, yes, so you guys, I'm going to bring you up to Edinburgh to see if you survive. And let's see if I can get you to join in the war as well. Are you at war as well? Who are you at war with? You are also defending against the invasion. So, I don't know if me joining your war would actually help me. Fantastic. Scotland is now on my side. So I might have half a chance of survival. Highly unlikely, probably, but we'll see what happens. So he has 1,700. So between the two of us, if we are lucky, we might be able to ambush a single one of these Scandinavian armies and have a go at fighting. Um, let's see what happens here. So we're fighting in the Battle of Dunbar. And it appears the Scots didn't turn up. Ah. Not great. Um, I'm going to pull my army back. Hmm. So maybe they'll only fight against the Yorkshire Vikings instead of fighting against the other ones. And, you know, it's just what it is. Um, okay, right, okay. So the Scots joined this time, but we are massively outnumbered. Uh, yeah, that's not going well for us. And my son is killed. And now I'm probably going to get killed. Yes, so Northumbria is defeated again. And you're going to watch as the Great Heathen Host now jumps right on top of my force. And absolutely blats our brains out. Yep. Yep. As you can see there, not particularly great. So my entire army was killed there, and that's pretty much game over when it comes to this. Um, so as you can understand, not exactly the greatest setup right there. So what I'm going to do is obviously um, probably wait a moment. I'll play this through just so you can see what it's like. The Scots are actually going to go down and support me. They're actually right now trying to raid some of the Yorkshire provinces and stop um, stop them from totally defeating me. But again, we're outnumbered, not going to go well in our favour. So what I might do is, what I'm going to do is go back to the main menu and start afresh. So, new game. Come back to Northumbria under Ella and start again. So, Ella here, we're going to go do something very similar. We're going to see we've got more men under our command this time. So, Marshall again. Um, focus on a more of a strategy focus here. Again, going to try and arrange a marriage with, um, I have a grandson. This might actually work in my favor because, no, he doesn't have any. So, he, does he have any children? So, in this particular case, oops, he, again, we have to do my granddaughter to King Mac and he won't accept this time. Why? Because he doesn't like the fact I am deceitful. 
If I sent him a gift, he would only receive five. So again, uh, now it's all about your starts sometimes and who is around you. So I am absolutely in deep trouble now unless somehow I can get a good Irish alliance. But it looks like I might be out of luck. It seems like all of the Irish as well. Can I get an alliance with you? Granddaughter. And you? Um, let's see. How many troops do you have? You have 900 troops as well. Uh, let's see. Other granddaughter. And you. Again, don't judge me for that. I do apologize. Fantastic. And can I get an alliance? So, call allies to war. And can I choose both wars or not? So they're both hopefully going to agree to join me to war. So what I'll do is I'm going to raise my armies over here. Out the way. So they don't get absolutely destroyed like last time. And then I'm going to wait over here to see if my reinforcements turn up because I'm in a bit of a tough position here I've got to try and pick off Scandinavian armies wherever we find them and hope that my Irish allies will come over to support me uh, as soon as possible as you can see I'm running out of one ducat a month and I need to have support as fast as possible to take on the Scandinavians. I might have a chance of winning one battle up in Edinburgh or along here, but I have to wait for them to wear themselves down against my forts. Um, okay, we've got some coming in. Yep, my Irish allies are on their way. Would prefer to have Scotland as my ally, but... At this point, you take what you can get. Um, yep may not even be able to catch up with them because as you can see I'm in a bit of a bad position there we go so maybe it's a good idea to lure them uh-huh and let's go around okay we've got our Irish allies with us and come on get out get out no okay we have to back up the irish allies um yep and that is pretty much the end of the war i believe because again, just like last time, I'm going to get surrounded and picked apart uh, in very, very quick time. Yeah, I retreated up to Dunbar straight away. Bam. Hit me with that. There's nowhere to go. Uh, so that is one of the ones right there that makes it a very, very difficult start with Northumbria. Now, one of the only ways of actually winning with Northumbria is actually to create a custom calendar. Uh, there we go. So, I have my son has now been taken captive because he's taken the whole province of Benicia. And so, because of that, it's pretty much over. There we go. So, now I only have Lovian left. And as you can see, I'm about to be taken apart by. Scandinavians up here. Maybe I'll be able to call my allies into these wars. 
and just see what happens here. And we might have a little bit of a chance of pushing out the Scandinavians in this area. But I'm already at minus 80. So I think that is a big unlikelihood. I just have to get the Irish allies over, but I have a feeling they're in their own conflicts as well. I win. Oh, we swap places. Might as well wait for the Irish to turn up because then I have a little bit more of a chance. Nope, nope, no chance whatsoever. And okay, I think I'm gonna win, but what it doesn't know is the reinforcements are coming. And bam, again. Northumbria is taken apart. I'm going to go all the way through. Oh, new alliance. So, that is my son-in-law, ironically enough, of this area here, Skellen. Currently making an alliance with the Scandinavians. And we're going to see my forces now... Hmm. Yeah, that's not happening. Uh, well done. Come on, let's see if we can do something. But again, it's going to probably be another sterling defeat. Yep. And as you can see, it's minus 100. So in a second, he's... There we go. Game over. So that's one of the big issues with starting as Northumbria you do get surrounded on all sides and totally and utterly taken apart. So what I'm going to do is, the only way to really have a go is I'm going to do an alternative history option. And this is where I'm going to pretend that uh, basically there is a different person ruling in Northumbria. And so what I'm going to do is create a character called Oswin. Choose a good Northumbrian name. Catholic, Anglo-Saxon... And he is going to be an Iding. Because we're going to say that he is of the Northumbrian dynasty. Who were ruling um, basically Northumbria right the way through. We're obviously uh, going to choose the Northumbrian coat of arms. And we're going to take away that fleur de lis. Just double check. Yep. Red and gold is the colours. And finish there. So there we have that. And obviously here's the Petty Kingdom of Northumbria. I have some customization points. I'm going to make him... Let's see. 25 years is good. And he is going to have to have a martial education. So make him a tough soldier. And I'm going to give him... Let's see. Diligent is a good one to have. And he's also going to be calm and I think I'm going to give him patient as well. He is going to start off unmarried and no sons and daughters. Pretty much a good decision for me and I'll explain why in a minute. Because I'm going to try and marry into the O'Neills 
of Northern Ireland. Um, so I could take some of these. I'll hopefully pick them up along the way, but I want instead to give myself some advantage uh, in regards to uh, the eugenics game, uh, which is a big part of Crusader Kings. You have to kind of give yourself any advantage possible, and one of the ways you can do that is with the intelligence and the um, those two traits there which will immediately mean in your family you have slight boosts and advantages when it comes to interacting with other people. So that's just one of the ones there. But I'll take those and I've got about 20 points left. So when I've got 20 points left so I can still get achievements, what else will I pick up? Pardon me, I do apologize. I think I'm going to go with... Athletic is a really nice one, but um, I think I won't be able to take that one. Um, so let's just see, what can I put 20 positive points into? All of these are more than that, so that's a bit unfortunate. Aspiring Blade Master. Oh, no, that's a bit too much. So maybe I'll just buy up some points. Give myself a bit more diplomacy. Uh, a bit more martial or stewardship. Ah, right. First name. Cannot end with a space. Oswin Iding of the Petty Kingdom of Northumbria. So he's gonna rule here, and we're gonna start. So straight away, as an Iding, or as the way I want to play it, I'm gonna look over here, we've got the House Neil, and we're gonna see if we can find a, an Uniel to marry, because they have some really good benefits. Just compassionate, arrogant. Yeah, she'll have to do, but she's Irish and it's going to set me in a good stead. So there we start there and we begin our journey. Um, next, I'm going to choose a martial lifestyle and we're going to go with authority focus. It's a really good one there. And then we're just going to check if we've got the best people in place. Um, so he's going to go and collect taxes, which is a good one at this point. Um, disrupt schemes is good. As my marshal, I want him to organize the army. And he's doing foreign affairs, which is good. My bishop, I could straight away start him focusing on Altklut. Because we want to get the kingdom of Strathclyde under our control. So there we got an alliance. Fantastic. Brilliant right there. So that's giving us a chance. I've got three perks. So I'm going to see Cassius Bailey's 50% cost. Organized March. Engineered for destruction. Organized March is good. And hit and run. There we go. So there I'm ready just to get a few more perks right there. We want to try and immediately try and take this land for Northumbria. Um, we need to build ourselves up as strong as possible because eventually we're going to need to take on Jorovic and we're going to need to take on the Isles as well. Uh, in the future we would like to make an alliance with the Scots or take some of their land, one or the two. We're married now so with our marriage to our wife we're obviously going to start building up some connections but also she's an O'Neill which is very descended from Neil of the Nine Hostages, a famous Irish character. So that is a really good, important setup there. So now Northumbria is in a better position. We can then wait and out and try and build up our dynasty a little bit there. So now it's a case of waiting. I'm actually going to see if any of you have um, posted any comments or anything like that. I can't see. There's five people watching though, so that's quite cool. Um, but I've got it open on my phone just to sort of try and have a look at the a live chat as it goes. 
Ah, hard to hear you. Sorry about that. Hi. Hey, <laughs> good job marrying into the O'Neills. Well, yeah, the O'Neills are the best option to marry into initially when you're in Northern Britain. Uh, the prestige bonus just gives you a chance, basically, when you're in and around the area. You need that prestige bonus straight away. If you don't get that prestige, your family's not going to get anywhere. And you're, you're, you're basically, you need that prestige boost so you can start building up your fame, so you can spend on wars later on. So it's a bit of a strategic one, but also it gives you that connection into Northern Ireland. And so if you get pulled into wars over there, you can earn more prestige, but also you get the double attack on Strathclyde. There's a number of different reasons why you sort of go for those uh, different attacks early on. Um... Ah, uh, yes. So, who are you? Yep, and I think that's not a hard choice. Always try and keep your wife happy for good reasons. Ah, I'm being raided by the King of Scotland. How kind of you. So, how many men do I have this time? I have 1,600 men. So, I'm going to raise them in Benicia at Bambra, Babenberg. And we're going to march up and deal with the Scots here. So come up into Trevordale, and we're going to try and hit the Scots before they get back into Scotland. So we're going to go up via Edinburgh, which was taken by Oswald of Northumbria very early on during his reign. There we go. Oh, am I going to lose this, or are we all right? No, I'm going to probably lose this one. Try and get a couple more casualties on the Scots, and then pull back to Selkirk. Okay. Looks like the Scots will have won this raid this time, unfortunately. Yeah, they've got away. Oh no, they're raiding Altklut, so I might be able to capture them and get my money back. So, all I need to know, they've gone. Bit frustrating, but... Just, that's the way it can play out sometimes. Just to check, can you still hear me well? Because I can see in the chat uh, that someone was saying uh, it was Julian saying it was a bit hard to hear me. Oh. That's nice. Ah, uh, the Scots are back again. Okay. Let's see if we can try and catch them this time. Quite important to do so. Got him. Great. So, looks like again, my troops, just because of numbers, I might just win. Um, but again, it's pretty evenly balanced, as you can see. And it might just go against me. Yep, I think it's gone against me now. But it's really come down to the last numbers. I'm willing to let this play out right to the bitter end. And it went against me. <laughs> just. Which is... Deeply frustrating, actually. <laughs> okay. So, now I'm going to let my troops replenish. And then we're going to go for the Kingdom of Altklut. So, hopefully we can uh, actually do something about that. So, my Chancellor was killed in battle. So I need to replace him. And my steward was killed in battle as well. So frustrating because he was actually a pretty good steward. Steward. But we'll just have a go again. And see what happens. Two, vic 
two de defeats to the King of Scots straight away is pretty frustrating. But um, hopefully I can build my army up and a win against the Kingdom of Strathclyde will be a pretty big one. Hopefully I can call in my allies over here, the Kingdom of uh, Chiefdom of Meath, and get the uh, the O'Neills on board. But uh, we'll see what happens. And I'm being raided by someone else. Um, one sec, he's got 1100. Oh, can I let some reprieve? Nope, looks like I can't. So let's get my army back up and running again. There we go. I have got a larger force than him this time. So maybe... He's a better commander though. Oh. Will numbers win it for me this time? Nope. Again. Pull back straight away. It's a pretty weak start for Northumbria. Normally I have a stronger start than this. But uh, hey, not bad. At least I haven't got like 10,000 angry Danes pouring into my land. Which uh, normally is a really big issue for me. I'm just trying to chase him down now to see if I can uh, get some of the gold that he's stolen back off him. Nope. Okay. Let's try and replenish the army, and then I'm going to go for Strathclyde. Steward died, so... Oh! We have a new steward who is slightly better. Hopefully we won't keep losing uh, councillors all the way through. Ah, good. I'm glad to hear it sounds good. Um, if anyone has any questions, uh, today I've been writing a load of stuff for um, basically trying to prepare for uh, doing some more filming. I'm going to be doing some filming on the Vikings, so that's one of the ones right there that I'm planning on doing. And uh, so I've been reading a lot about the Viking Age in Northumbria, so that's my next series of videos I'm doing. In the meantime, though, I've just been doing tons of tours, so it's been a really busy period for me, but at the same time, Life is good, so you can't really complain when life is going well like that. Mm -hmm. Martial lifestyle perk. Right, Parthian tactics doesn't really help me, but... I'm going to need the siege engines to deal with Strathclyde. They've got 1,400 men. I've got now less than them. Presume what's happened there. Is it because I'm injured? It'll probably be something like that. Okay, no longer wounded. Okay. So just wondering what's going on here. Because the army was about 1700 before now. So I'm not entirely certain why it's dropped down. But I'll let it increase a little bit longer. And then hopefully we'll be able to take on Strathclyde. Yeah, I'm out and about touring in Newcastle tomorrow. I've got double back-to-back -to -back tours. I've got a tour that I call the Gory Tour. Ah. Now that's a little bit of a problem. So he is also married to my ally. So because of that, it's probable that my ally is not going to turn up for me in battle. <laughs> we are both allied to the same person. Brilliant. Um, this may cause a little bit of an issue. But it, one positive thing is it means that the number I'm seeing here is not their actual strength. I've got an actual larger army than he has. Uh, just, just not as good as I thought. 
um, which is a problem. So let's see if I can recruit you to court. And we'll see how it goes. Still need a couple more soldiers and I'll wait a little bit longer. Uh, my wife... Hmm. I will learn my wife's language, which will hopefully set us in a better stead. Because uh, then, obviously, that will improve relations with the Irish over here. If I can, what I'll do is I'll try and mix the cultures and mix the Irish and the uh, Anglo-Saxon culture together and create a new fusion. Ah, brilliant. That's not good. And, oh, another bishop died. I always find it funny when you can get stuff like honorable atheist as your bishop um really sort of like a funny one to get because i'm just like well how come you can get that on a priest you should always have some sort of like um your council instead of being like an honorable atheist have some sort of the theology focus and also alongside this learning focus for bishops um thankfully he's a lot better than other bishops that i've seen and uh had when i've been playing before but it does sort of always tickle me that you get this sort of like situation where you don't necessarily get a very good religious leader for your um for your kingdom all the others i understand you pick them pretty much but uh having a bishop who is an atheist i find or like has the trait where he's called that is um the sort of uh, that sort of thing there um, will I be covering the Ul Ilma? Yes, actually. I'm doing, hopefully doing a video on a couple of them. Um, so to anyone else who hasn't seen it in a chat, clans and dynasties, Michael's uh, just made a very good question about the descendants of Ivar the Boneless. So if you didn't know, Ivar the Boneless, um, he was also in Dublin over here. And when he was in Dublin over here, he had descendants who then ruled in Ireland and on the west coast of Scotland. But there was a few of them, and I believe, I've just got to pull out my notes, I think it's Ragnall, um, actually became a king of Northumbria. So one second, I'll just see if I can find my particular notes that I wrote today. But I think it's Ragnall, and then his... Um, oh, one second, let's see what's happening here. Hmm... Ooh. So do I want money, prestige, or do I want to try and go for it myself? Um, I always like a challenge, but it's the 39% isn't great. Um, and I don't need the... Res I probably need the money more than anything else. Which is a little bit boring, but... Ah, raiders... Um, but Ragnall, yes, Ragnall, and then after him, a member of his family continues becoming king of Northumbria until they're driven out again. So it's an interesting one to sort of see that and basically the effect of that on the kingdom of Northumbria as well. Yeah, so you can see Ivar the Boneless's lads up here. Let's, take, let's have a look at Ivar. Here's Ivar the Boneless. Now, possibility Ivar the Boneless could be called this because he was possibly massive and really, really big and powerful, a huge Viking warlord, possibly named after that. Or So that's how they've respect, res, um, reflected him here. So they've made him very large, powerful war, war leader, but they've also made him one-legged, which, again, it could also be the fact that he may be crippled, but it's a big discussion. Was he crippled? Was he not crippled? You know, that's one of the sort of big discussion points when it comes to Ivar the Boneless. And then his brother, Hafdan, he actually then um, also goes across and he conquers in Ireland. And he becomes the king of Northumbria later on. But when he becomes the king of Northumbria, he goes out to Ireland and in 877 he dies. So the, the sons of Ragnar are actually involved in both the west coast of Scotland, they're involved over here in Ireland and up here in Northumbria, and have a big sort of influence on this whole region. 
So that's one of the ones there. But if this was a normal game and I wasn't playing like a, a non uh, sort of like I wasn't playing Illa of Northumbria, then basically we'd already be dead by now. As you saw in my two practice runs, uh, you just get taken out within minutes. So that's a, a pretty big issue right there. Why is my wife not particularly pleased with me? Or I might, just to make it even more interesting, convert over to Insula. But uh, I'm not entirely sure, because I do like the idea of being Insula Christian. Because I don't know if you know, but uh, there was an Irish um, bishop called Aidan who came across and he set up Lindisfarne, which uh, over here you've got Bambra, but you've got Lindisfarne right here. Actually should be just out over here, Holy Island, uh, just on the coast, right about here, off the coast of Bambra. So uh, he was Irish, he came across and he converted the Northumbrians to Christianity, and when he converted them, initially they were Celtic Christians. So when they were Celtic Christians, later on after the conversion to Celtic Christi uh, from Celtic Christianity, there was the Synod of Whitby, where Oswin of Nof sorry, Oswi of Northumbria decided instead to... Um, Yes, all of Strathclyde will be mine. There we go, we've got the whole petty kingdom will be mine. And my military strength is just a little bit more powerful than theirs. So what we're going to do is we're going to be quite careful. And I'm going to launch an assault very shortly. Um, against the kingdom of Strathclyde. Because I would like to win against the kingdom of Strathclyde as fast as possible. Uh, but yes, uh, Aidan, um, he was obviously king under Oswald, and then Oswi, Oswald's brother, he was then faced with the, um, the Synod of Whitby just down here. When there was the Synod of Whitby, they decided to convert to Catholicism uh, rather than the insular Christianity. So that meant that they changed over to the, uh, to the Catholic faith rather than the insular faith. Both of them are just flavors of Christianity. But in this playthrough, I might swap to the insular Christianity or the Christianity which is in uh, Ireland and Scotland, which would obviously then give an added complication to the whole playthrough, uh, because obviously you've got the, the complication between the Northumbrians and then also the, uh, the Catholic Church as well. So we'll see how that goes. I'm just going to wait a little bit longer. He's got 1,500 men now, but... Again, we're both allied to the same person, so it depends on who comes into the war. Will he come in on my side, or will he come in on his side? Might come in on his side, but we will just have to hope for the best. Yeah, I almost want his son to take over, because if his son takes over, his son is a horrendous warrior. Whereas his father is actually a pretty good warrior, so it would be nice to see the kingdom so suitably weakened, but I'm not going to do a murder plot. I don't want to do that, and uh, that's just not the way I want to play this at the minute. So what we'll do is we'll wait a little bit longer, maybe one more month, and then in July I'll do the, the campaign and I'll attack Strathclyde. And there we go, July. Hopefully, we are ready to go. So declare war for the whole of Canada there. It's going to cost me 100 prestige. Let's raise my armies in Bambra. And I'm going to call my ally. He will not come to war. Um, but he's got seven. So maybe I can bribe him. Yeah. So now, he will accept. Yeah. So now he's coming in on my side, rather than on the Kingdom of Strathclyde's side. Very useful. So now I might win this first battle. I think the Irish are going to come in just on time to save me. There we go. <laughs> Unfortunately, Northumbria's troops in this playthrough are not as particularly strong as they usually are. 
There we go, we've won the first battle. So now we just have to follow up with a couple more just to make sure that we uh, we have the advantage. And then as soon as possible, we need to basically take as much territory as possible off him. There we go. Chase him down. And then we will bring Strathclyde back into the Kingdom of Northumbria. Here we go. Potential battle. There we go. And the, because the Irish are with us, we outnumber them. And we can basically just bully them into submission. Son of Gothred, yeah, I know. There are a couple of different debates as to who's who. So right now, just chasing down the Strathclyde forces and trying to give myself as much an advantage as possible in these coming battles. It's my turn to come in and support the Irish on this one. There we go. Obviously you can't win a... Well, you can win a war through just battles, but this one won't be won. I'm just trying to make sure that I have as much of an advantage... Uh, when this comes down to it. Has a new update of CDK. The Pope is the head of the Insular Christian. And he's been released yet. I don't know actually. I'll need to have a look at that. Um, I'll have a quick look over to Italy anyway. Because the papacy is always a good one. He is Catholic and a Swabian. I don't know, maybe if I change over to Insular Christianity, that will make a difference. One sec, I'll try and find Insular. Um, so they're definitely Insular. I know that much. So where is their... In One sec. Insular. Uh, astray. Organized Christian faith. Yeah, the head of the po yes, the Pope is the head of the Insular Faith. Well, that makes my life a lot easier. I will be converting to um, to Insular Christianity. Actually, then that is a thanks for the head up. Then that's actually a really that's a boon for me right there. Uh, I will be uh, Insular momentarily. I'll wait to the end of the war. Uh, press the attack, Reckless, or Reaver. Yep, Reaver's a good one for an Anglo-Saxon king. Don't want to take too much uh, damage in a foreign territory. And they've come to me. And again, we're going to win this battle, thankfully. Though I am watching the Scots, and the Scots are probably going to be raiding my territory. No, we're good. Won another battle. But I now need to secure territory. Hooray! Wife pregnant. Always good when you're doing a dynastic game, because it keeps telling me, obviously, that I have no heir to my dynasty. So if I die, game over. So all the good work. There we go. You see the Scots are raiding me. Just as I told you. Oh. It's going to be a much more difficult battle this time. I think he hired mercenaries. Nope. Managed to push through as, as we have done before. But I'm being raided by Scandinavians just over there as well. 
can't take too many more losses. I need to be able to win these sieges. Uh, so I'll probably avoid a couple more battles in a little bit, but I need to wait out on this siege. Um... I have to rebuild in this occasion. It's a lot more close this time. Yeah, I think we might have lost this one. So yeah, we're going to have to replenish our forces and come back. Ah. for your lives. Flee, flee, flee. Yep. And let's call him Oswald for the sake of it. There you go, Oswald. Who has got both O'Neill and Iding uh, blood in his veins. Let's take that now. And I will need to just replenish my troops for a little bit at Bambra. As you can see, the war is now ticking down. Even though I'm in a positive, it's now ticking down because of the fact that uh, I don't actually control any of his territory. So this is where the war may go against me, because I need to replenish as many troops as possible so that I can actually take him on again. Now he's raiding me, but I'm rebuilding. So I need to get across quite quickly to deal with that. Um, do you mean like within uh, the CK3 game? Yeah, general, there is no difference between like Northumbrians and like uh, Wessex forces or anything like that. Um, what you do notice is obviously the Brafonic kingdoms. They're, they are um, they are different. You notice a difference between like the kingdoms of like Strathclyde and stuff like that. But you don't notice as much with the other kingdoms, that's for certain. Um, it doesn't feel like... I mean, you can make it more culturally different. So, like, for instance, if I go into... Um, here, Anglo-Saxon culture. If I become the head of the culture, at the moment it's obviously Wessex is the head, then I can change some of this stuff up and I can make a more bespoke kingdom. But generally, you don't get that sort of power to change the way things work. And that's, that's sad, in a way, because it would be much nicer to sort of, like, have Northumbrian legacy or have... You know, a sort of a legacy that's slightly different. 
to the the standard legacy of like oh you're just anglo-saxon which you know some of that will be modded in i'm sure there's some really good mods which uh basically show it slightly differently where you can have um like northumbria has slightly different heritage because obviously northumbrians were a mixture of the northern british combined with the um with the new anglian migrants who came in uh, just like any other kingdom so like mercia down here was from a combination has a lot more of influence of the welsh and the marcher lands down there and then eventually spreads out this way lindsay was its own kingdom but then came under the control of northumbria so each one has its own sort of like thing that makes it a bit more unique when you look at it um I will do that. I gained some stress, unfortunately. Um, I'm going to gain athletic. Yes. I know that's not exactly great that I was overwhelmed by stress, but uh, much better to be af um, athletic than to be drunkard or anything like that. You can go uh, and do a lot more of that sort of running and stuff like that. Uh, now, definitely need to get up there and support my Irish allies. Faster, faster, faster. Come on. Can we get there in time? Oops. Okay. I'm going to win this one. Get back to sieging Altklut. Kingdom of the Rock and do that. So, uh, <laughs> Regwald? We're not going to call him Regwald. That's the King of East Anglia. Um, ooh, Elstan, Svevald, Edwulf, Athelswin. Oh no, let's call him. Athelfrith. There we go, a good and more Northumbrian name. Maybe we'll chuck in an Ida later on as well. But yeah, we don't really see the differences. So Mercia doesn't feel much different to East Anglia, Wessex. It's more down to how you roleplay it than any sort of cultural buffs or cultural changes that you could possibly have. Um, just makes... A slightly different play on the game, if you like. Just going to siege this down, and then hopefully uh, we'll see what happens next. There we go. I'm now at 100%, so I can then quickly enforce my demands. Bam. I take over the kingdom. Um, do you think any of these differences should be highlighted more in the game? That's just whatever. Yeah, I think that would make a difference, actually, to sort of, like, change up some of these, sort of, the way things work within the system. But I think it requires way more of a knowledge of, like, the individual history. So it's like when uh, you and, um, well... When, uh, sorry, when Phil from um, Irish Medieval History was discussing um, some of the mods for, like, um, what is it, Medieval Total War and stuff like that, you need to have someone who really understands the period to actually be able to go, right, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to really mod this so it actually works as it, and it feels like, um, like Irish history i like irish um sort of um heritage whereas like if you don't know that then why would you, why would it work and now i desperately need to grant some land away you really don't like me because oh yeah you're the son of the previous owner and i might need to basically imprison you and get rid of your uh get rid of some of your land uh, because otherwise you are a powerful vassal who does not like me much. Um, cool. Everyone is happy here. 
I need to continue building up my power. And then eventually, I need to look at taking on him. So, he's still got 6,000 men. Over here, he's got three and a half. Uh, so, if I need... <laughs> install... You want to install yourself. Yeah, artwork would be different. I mean, you can tell some differences. So, for instance, he is supposed to be Cumbrian. And so the Cumbrians have a different culture. The Cumbrian culture focuses on highland war, you know, refined poetry, concubines, stalwart defenders. The poetry I like because obviously it's a reference towards people like the Welsh poets. And also you've got the... Um, who is it? Um, I do apologize. The kings... So the, the men of the north. The hen... Uh, Henoged uh, up in here in the north, which is a big part of the, the Welsh myths later on. And you've also got, obviously, the writer, um, sorry, the monk Gildas. So, again, that Cumbrian refined poetry connects probably quite nicely into the Welsh. So, yeah, as you can see here, Welsh culture and Cumbrian culture, the same. Anglo Saxon has. Uh, Anglo Saxon elective succession law. Um, here, so men at arms and city keepers. Gaelic up here. Fishermen, hill dwellers, strong kinship, highland warriors, and concubines. Pictish has hill dwellers, refined poetry, highland warriors. It's quite a lot of the British Isles is quite similar culturally, actually, which uh, I expect you can only do so many more cultures. Irish, uh, maritime mercantilism, pastoralists, polyac. Oh, wow. Four spouses in Ireland. Monastic communities. God, that must be a wee bit of a headache. Uh, but hey, that's what they've decided to do. Who is my successor? Um... Oh, this is the Kingdom of Albia. So, I think... We will do her as for the Kingdom of Scotland. So yeah, that's one of the things there. But it's nice to see Pictish and Scots, well, Gaelic, Scots, Irish, and obviously uh, Cumbrian to actually be reflected. Because so often, you just, you never really see that within a game. You never see that sort of, you know, nuance of the British culture. It would just be Celtic and Anglo-Saxon, which, which is not the case. Um, there are some issues with the dynasties of Ireland be, not being correct in the case yeah, well, that's the thing as well. Some of these, by this point, the dynasties are very hard to trace. So, like, for instance, I would say that when you come to, like, um, Ella of Northumbria, we don't actually know if he's an Iding. Because what happens is that sort of the last of the Idings die out, and then there's three dynasties that can all trace them their dynasty back to the actual uh, Northumbrians. Um, poet... Romantic poem, and I gain stress because I'm diligent. Studying poetry collector, I will try. I am a poet now. Fantastic Anglo-Saxon poet. You can't uh, can't lose there. But yeah, there's three dynasties that basically each take a turn at ruling Northumbria. But the problem is it really weakens Northumbria because they're constantly fighting against one another. So when you've got that constant fighting, it basically results in Northumbria being in civil war. And then Ella is either in civil war with his brother. I think it's Oswin. No, it's not Oswin. It's... um. Well, I can't remember his name off the head, but it's either his brother, his cousin, or his father, or something like that, he's in civil war with, or a distant family member. And then that means that the civil war, so in 865 AD, what happens then is obviously the Scandinavians come over from here, from the Low Countries, and invade East Anglia, then come up and take York, and then after that, obviously, 
um, Northumbria is in a very difficult sort of position where they're constantly attacking and undermining the power of Northumbria. So that's why I would uh, I'd say that sometimes it's very hard to do those dynasties. Mercy and Wessex are pretty on. I think obviously, yeah, this is, I think, supposed to be King Alfred's uncle. Um, yeah, there we go. Patty King Alf... Oh, there's Alfred. So Alfred the Great is here. There we go. So Alfred the Great is ready. He's in a great position. And he will be ready to unite. So the, the, the Jorvik, they're supposed to be attacking Mercia. They're supposed to have been taken over. But right here we have this Paragon is Alfred the Great right here. So he's in the right place. And yeah, right dynasty up here in Mercia as well. East Anglia, yeah, Edmund, so he's ready to be martyred. So he's supposed to be tied to a, tea, a tree and shot full of arrows. Um, that's why there's a place in East Anglia called Bury St. Edmunds. Where I actually have family, well, family used to live near Bury St. Edmunds, but yeah, he's supposed to become St. Edmund of England, uh, martyred by being shot full of arrows. Mm hmm. So, if I want to, the next one is to go and do a religious war against this guy for, yeah, for the Isles. And I think that's my next step. So, as you can see, his power is way more than mine. Oswald, rowdy. Good lad. And you inherited both hail and quick. I'm very, very pleased with that. So we need to start educating you straight away. And Athelrith, I need to start educating you straight away. How old are you? Three. Should we start finding you a very beneficial um, engagement? Not yet. Ah, my wife's given birth again. Let's have a look for more Anglo-Saxon names. That's a good one. There we go. So, in definitely in better place. Heresy. Twisted mockery of our faith. And now it's time to convert to Insula. Oh, I need to have more, more faith myself before I can do that. Yes, I can speak. Go Derek. Yep, that's one good there. So now... He's got even more men. Of 10,000. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do that for a while. And... If I wanted to declare war in Scotland, or I can request a claim... No, can't do that one either. Um, so I need to wait out. I can't expand just yet. I need to build up so I can take on one of these two nearby. Because they're too powerful at the minute. So maybe I can do a decision. Let's work on some sweat and stress.
and pilgrimage. I don't have the money for pilgrimage. Develop capital. And continue going on. I'm probably going to start rounding this up in a wee bit. But I have enjoyed it. But you can sort of see how once you've got Strathclyde under your power, you're sort of in a position where you either have to take Jorvik or you have to take the Western Isles. And then you have to start pushing into Scotland. And it's basically a race. Within one lifetime, you have to form a kingdom of either England or Scotland. Or usurp Scotland and take that as a kingdom title so that you can actually continue the game. But it's nice because I, I like taking Northumbria and doing it. But then obviously you can see in Western Europe you've got East Francia, Lothringia, West Francia, Aquitaine, uh, Brittany, and but Bavaria is the main central, well, and Italy as well, but as the main European um, nations. And then obviously um, the start of the movements down into um, north, northern Spain. If Alfred the Great hadn't united the United Kingdom, do you think there was another kingdom the hypotheticals was powerful close enough to act together to achieve this? No, I don't think so. I think that basically, if you look at it, half it, when Alfred becomes king, obviously Alfred was... So people always say that he created England, but it was actually his grandson who created England. Al, Alfred needed... He defeated the Danes, and that enabled for England to come together, because basically the Anglo-Saxons went, well, the enemy of my enemy. I mean, even when you look at it, Mercia was sort of like a vassal kingdom, but his daughter, you know, she, she actually brought Mercia together to the point where the Danes would have actually submitted to her had she lived longer. So had she lived longer, she would have then been able to bring the Danes underneath Mercia and maybe would have seen more of a sort of a mixture, sort of like a, a north-south, where we would have Wessex in the south and a central kingdom and then a northern kingdom. But it just, again, it's all hypotheticals. I think Wessex was the only one at that time because Northumbria... Nathumbria could have created a northern British kingdom, but again, like if you watched my video that I released today, that relies on like a powerful king such as Ecfrith um, to be able to unite this kingdom together. If you don't have that sort of power to unite together, to, you know, bring the Picts under their control and then to push control into Ireland then you don't see a new kingdom forming because these guys don't think of great nation building like you would see maybe with Charlemagne or you see with Alfred who are focused on this sort of Roman concept of a, a nation, of a, an empire. Um, people like these warlords like you see in East Anglia, Mercia, they're thinking of their, um, their very early... Um, so it's, it's like warlords, it's dynasties, it's passing on to your kids. And I don't know if you saw that pop up, but just there, Hiberno Norse, uh, Norse scales have just been formed. So you have the Norse scales just up here, have been formed. Malleable invaders. So yeah, that's one of the things I love about the Vikings, is that uh, they, they really, really <laughs> were very, very willing to become a part of the culture that they were invading. They transformed. They became a different people. Uh, ooh, an alliance with Mercia. Yes. I definitely want that. You've got 1,500 men. I've got nearly 2,000. And with the Irish as well. Ooh. I've got a truce for eight years. But with the Mercians, would we have a chance against Ivar the Boneless? Um, we're getting there, but he's still way too powerful. Way too powerful. And I need to be more holy. So I think I'm going to go on a pilgrimage to be, boost up my holiness. Um, let's go to Jerusalem. I definitely need to be a better Christian king if this is going to happen. Oh, Constantine II, are you? You're raiding me. Um, oh, but you've got definitely way more 
men than I do. Yep, uh, hopefully I'll recover. And time to pull back. But it's just enough to get them to leave. Cool, I'm now a pilgrim. I gain that, and I gain a level of faith. Cool. Um, unfortunately, I had to lose so many men doing that, but that's another matter. So. Now, if I now want to convert to my wife's faith. Check what it would cost to do a holy war. Okay. Yeah, can't do that yet, so I think it's time to become insular. You are... Ooh, very well learned. Yes. New bishop, very good. That's what I like to see. So you are an evil paragon, apparently. Um... So Scots are definitely more powerful, but yeah, I think my next target has to be the Scots because I've got Mercy as an ally. So maybe I can take some more territory of the Scots and really secure a more of a power base. So when I've regained some of my soldiers, I think it's time to look at that. And, Um, what else can I do? I need to hand off some of my titles. I need to hand off two more holdings. Um, what for one do I have that I can hold off? Uh, Lancashire, Westmoreland, Lanarkshire, Trevordale, 
Dombar, Lovia, and Benicia, Strathclyde. I think it has to be... It's part of a Lovian. Hmm. Oh, no. Just double checking if there was any more there. Additional taxes. Fantastic. I think I have to... Do that instead. And then give it a little bit more time. Oh. win myself back from the hands of the Dane. I'm just going to chase him down until I can eventually defeat him in battle again. And hopefully release myself.
sorry, I've been quiet for a little bit. Um, just realised I've been... Need the money to free myself. Hey. I think I'll have to just do it. And then hopefully I can get my son free at the same time. But for 881, Northumbria is still alive, so that's a good one. Still 5,000 men for Yarl. Ivar the bonus also has 2,500. If I was to declare war on him for the Isles, he's still got 8,000 men. Yep, that's going to be a rough one. And he has seven and a half. So that would be a hairy, hairy fight. So it might just be that it has to be wars against the Scots. I'll send a poem to him. Seems like the right thing to do, doesn't it? Poems between kings? Aha. Now, I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. But my truce is, I have one less truce. Hmm. Yes, I kind of need something to shift. I think a war with Scotland would be the best option. probably will swap over to domain so that I can better rule my lands. I think I'll set my bishop to claiming another territory in Scotland. 
and we'll see how it goes from there. Nice. Uh, one moment, everyone. Well, everyone, I'm going to head off now. It has been an absolute pleasure chatting to you all this evening. And I've actually enjoyed this as well. So I hope you do too. Obviously, this will go live as a video on the page. So uh, if you haven't already, if you have watching this in the future, please do like and subscribe. If you'd like to support me further, I do also have a Patreon. And if you would just like to do a one-off thing, um, you could always give a coffee, which I have in the description of most videos. But have a lovely rest of your evenings, and thank you so much as always. But I look forward to speaking to you in the near future. So I will just bring the stream to a nice, hopefully tidy conclusion. Until next time though, cheerio.